Have you ever thought about how your phone or computer knows the difference between music and pictures? In short, that's all determined by the container the file data comes in. Stick around and we'll explain how that works. It's quite easy for us to tell what kind of data is what. If it comes in through our eyes, it's an image. If it comes in through our ears, it's a sound. That's something that our brain begins to understand before we're even born. But since computers don't have eyes, ears or a brain, how do they know what's what? It's all determined by what data comes with the file. Every file on your computer has a file extension. It's usually a short abbreviation that goes on the end of a file name. A few common ones you may have seen are MP3 for music, PDF for document files, MP4 for video, and GIF for GIFs. Different extensions are used for different types of files and over time these get changed and updated. Recently Microsoft changed the .doc extension for Word files to .docx. This lets Word know what to expect when it opens a file. In short, using a file extension lets the computer's software know what kind of data to expect when it opens a file. As an example, let's take a look at image files. There are different ways images can be stored and each type has its own strengths and weaknesses. Bitmap or raster images such as JPEGs store image data on a pixel by pixel basis. This is most commonly used when taking a photo. Mapping each pixel to the right color can take up a fair bit of data. To get around this, some file formats make use of compression algorithms. More on that in an upcoming video. The other issue with bitmap files is that because they are pixel based, you can't zoom in or enlarge the image without it looking more pixelated. In contrast, a vector image doesn't map the pictures pixel by pixel, but instead uses lines, polygons and curves to record what shapes and colors should be where. This is often used in animation and graphic design because it allows rescaling without loss of clarity. With a vector, you can zoom in as far as you like and the clean edges of each color will remain. Another way for a file to be understood by software is internal metadata. This is often contained within the file header at the beginning of a file's data. The header can include information about how to interpret the file and the properties of the file. For an image file, this might include the ways in which the file can be decompressed and what color is related to what binary codes. This begins to get quite complex, so we won't go into depth now. Going back to our file extensions, in the past, common operating systems were limited to short file extensions, but more recently this limit has been lifted, allowing potentially limitless numbers of file extensions to exist. There are file extensions for every single thing on your computer, from music, to programs, to saved games and even websites. Knowing which extensions represent different types of data will help you understand the files in your digital world. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell button to get notifications. And if you're a teacher, check out the links in the description for worksheets and lesson plans that go along with this video.